Welcome to the Next Wave of Digital Video. I'm your host, Tony Reale. And speaking of Next Wave, we're in the next generation of filmmaking. Um, I'm gonna be honest, there are, there have been a handful of times throughout uh, my filmmaking career over the last 15 plus years where something just stood out to me and felt like it was a generational leap forward in the ability for uh, to shoot film. Uh, and I, I look back at like depth of field adapters, uh, DSLR video, uh, motion control, gimbals. And there's so many different types of technology that have come along. Drones. And drones. Thank you, Sean. Um, there have been so many different types of technology that have come along and allowed us to uh, take a giant leap forward in what we could do and what we could, uh, uh, how we can approach filmmaking. And I'm excited to be standing in front of the next generation of that, which is virtual production. Virtual production is the idea of being able to uh, do real-time visual effects right in camera. You may have seen it on shows like The Mandalorian or on Star Trek where they've done these either set extensions or just complete virtual worlds that you can enter into. And they're done with LED walls and they're super cool, super awesome, but they're super expensive. Uh, you know, The Mandalorian famously, it's cost them hundreds of millions of dollars to do what they're doing. Uh, some uh, productions have gotten it down to maybe tens of millions, but the truth of the matter is it's way outside the price point of the average shooter like myself and our production company. That is until uh, we've done what we've done here. This is to me the, the most approachable, the lowest price point uh, virtual production set that you can do right now. And we're using an ultra short throw projector for that. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove this jacket because it's really toasty in here. And I'm gonna give you a tour of the set. All right, so uh, LED walls are crazy expensive at this point. I would love to have one someday, but right now uh, to get something that would fit in our studio would still be several hundred thousand dollars to get something that would be high enough quality with a, with a tight enough pixel pitch that you could shoot against it and not get moray uh, issues. So. The, the alternative is what we're using is an ultra short throw projector. The reason we're working with an ultra short throw is I can stand directly in front of it and not have the projector beam hitting me in the face. This is the Samsung LSP7T. Uh, and I work together with the guys at Dream Media Home Theaters. Uh, they're amazing. If you have any questions about home theater stuff, contact them. I've done a lot of home theater installs over the years, but I hadn't worked with ultra short throws. So they were able to give me some great tips and we ended up with the Samsung model that we have here. Uh, it's got a good brightness, it's a 4K projector, and we're shooting it against an ALR screen. It stands for ambient light rejection. This is an ultra short throw, so a UST ALR screen. This is the, the largest one that I could find. They make uh, uh, ALR screens typically in the 100 to 130 inch range, but I did find one that we could build our own frame and uh, this is 150 inches. So that's the biggest screen that I could find. Obviously, the bigger the screen, the more area that we'll have to work with. So that's why I work with this size screen. Um, but the ALR portion of it allows us to minimize how much spill is gonna be hitting the background from all the lights that I have going around here. And you'll see, we've got quite a few lights in order to get the different looks. Um, I was actually experimenting a few days ago with different looks. I was in a forest or I was in a, um, like a, a city backdrop. I used a bunch of different looks just to experiment what I could do with this type of setup. One thing that you'll notice on all these lights is they have some sort of a grid on them. And that's because we need to control the spill. Even though this is an ALR screen, we got to minimize the amount of lights that are hitting it. So this light here, this is one of my came TV RGB LEDs. I really like this light. I've used this a ton uh, over the years. Once you get RGB and have that option for color, it's, it's just a really awesome thing to have. So I've used this a lot, but it's got this really nice tight grid to it. Up here, I've got a backlight that's on this really nice uh, boom extendable pole that I can raise and lower depending on where I need it. And I can swing it back and forth. So if I need a backlight talent from left or to the right, it's really easy to reposition the light without having a stand get in the way. And then over here, I've got a diffuse softbox. This thing is amazing for just putting on any little LED. This is just a, a came TV, a little bicolor LED that I have. And being able to work with bicolor and RGB is really important because the projector itself is daylight balanced. So I need to have most of my lights in the daylight range, but I may want to warm it up a little bit. I may want to, uh, you know, if I'm shooting in more of a, a warm sunshine scene or something like that, I might dial these more towards 
um, a warmer tone, but if I'm shooting something maybe sci-fi or, or something more blue, I can't dial any more to daylight, so I would need to have RGB LEDs that can have blues and, and greens and other colors. This right here is the IntelliTech Fast Flag kit. Uh, it's got the built-in silk end grid across it. It's really awesome, great, uh, easy to set up on set, um, and obviously it's nice and big here, so it makes a great key light. Um, and then uh, the last but not least, I have a four x four floppy here on a, on a rolling stand. So I can easily position that to keep that off of the screen as much as possible. And so we're running all of this through uh, our Ursa, old school Ursa camera, still makes a great studio camera. And we can pipe this directly into our broadcast booth back here, which has Sean. I am the broadcast booth. Hello, my name is Sean. <laughs> So this is our area for, for the eSports that we're doing. So you'll notice as I flip the camera you around. you want to see my in and out ports? <laughs> okay, anyways. So right now we're pumping this into uh, OBS. Yeah, this is, just, this is just the thing that we have for a league uh, coming up set up. So I'm just using the camera feed for getting it set up. Anyways, yeah. So yeah, this is our broadcast area. Um, and then you'll notice over here, this is our other studio setup for our eSports broadcast for our arcade. And we're gonna do a whole uh, build video on this. Uh, we just finished this build out. We've been doing all this kind of at the same time. So we'll do a video on this very soon. Um, and this was, this was really a lot of fun to build, a lot of work, yeah, but the result was great. Yeah, all the ins and outs of the, uh, of the LED and everything that I learned from doing that. We also, that also gave me a lot of ideas for doing some other types of LED controller driven lighting that you can do on a budget DIY that we'll also show you that we plan on creating to create some more practical lighting effects using an LED grid and uh, a controller using um, either images or video as the driver. So we have a lot of content that we're working on. This is the first step that we're working on with this, uh, our, our calling it our, our, our AR wall, our augmented reality wall. Um, we've got a lot of cool stuff planned for it. Uh, right here, I've got my CineDrive head um, and uh, I'm gonna be playing around with motion control and some of those things that we can accomplish with it. I've got some new lights that I'm gonna be rigging up and testing out. Um, and you'll notice on the camera here, there's a Vive tracker. So this is just a static video loop backdrop that I'm testing around and just testing out lighting and seeing how well the projector worked as a whole. The next step for us is to integrate Unreal Engine into it so we can get real time, uh, real time visual effect rendering on the screen. And when we move the camera, the uh, tracker will be able to know exactly where the camera is in relation to the screen and then re-render the background with proper parallax. So again, if you've seen any of the shows like The Mandalorian or Star Trek where they've had these real-time uh, renderings happen on the background, they're using Unreal Engine typically, and they're getting high quality, real-time rendering in the background. So that's the next step for us. So follow us on the journey if you're not subscribed already. Please check us out, please subscribe to our channel. Um, but we're excited for a lot more content on this new virtual production uh, phase addition to our company.